Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our channel. Today, we are delving into one of the most devastating pandemics in human history, the plague. Join us as we explore its origins, impact on societies, and the lessons we can learn from this dark chapter of our past. What is plague? Plague is a contagious and severe infectious disease caused by the bacterium Yersinia pestis. It primarily affects rodents, and humans can contract the disease through bites from infected fleas or by coming into contact with infected animals. Plague can manifest in different forms, including bubonic, septismic, and pneumonic. It has caused several historical pandemics, resulting in significant mortality rates. Brief History of Plague The history of plague dates back thousands of years, and the disease has been responsible for several devastating pandemics throughout human history. Early Records Plague likely first emerged in Central Asia and was mentioned in ancient texts from various civilizations, such as Mesopotamia, Egypt, and China, as early as 3000 BC. Justinian Plague, 541-542, Ad. One of the earliest recorded pandemics, the Justinian Plague, struck the Byzantine Empire, including Constantinople, and is estimated to have killed tens of millions of people. The Black Death, 1347-1351, the most infamous pandemic, also known as the Black Death, swept through Europe, Asia, and Africa. Originating in Central Asia, the disease spread via trade routes, decimating Europe's population and resulting in an estimated 75 to 200 million deaths. Third Pandemic, 1855-1950, the third pandemic started in China's Yunnan province and spread globally through trade and transportation. It reached parts of Europe, Africa, and the Americas, resulting in millions of deaths. Plague still exists in some parts of the world, such as parts of Africa, Asia, and the Americas. About Causal Agent of Plague, Yersinia pestis. Yersinia pestis is a gram-negative bacterium responsible for causing the deadly infectious disease known as plague, also known as the Black Death. Here's a brief overview of the structure and morphology of Yersinia pestis. Shape. Yersinia pestis is a rod-shaped bacterium. Under a microscope, it appears as a short, plump, and non-modal, lacking flagella, rod. Gram stain. Yersinia pestis is gram-negative, which means that it does not retain the violet color of the gram stain and appears pink or red when counterstained with saffronin. Capsule. Yersinia pestis possesses a protective capsule around its cell wall, which helps it evade the host's immune system and contributes to its virulence. Cell wall. Like other gram-negative bacteria, Y. pestis has a thin peptidoglycan layer in its cell wall, which is surrounded by an outer membrane. Plasmids. Y. pestis contains several virulence-associated plasmids, which are small, circular DNA molecules separate from the main chromosomal DNA. These plasmids encode various factors that aid the bacterium in evading host defenses and causing disease. Fimbriae. The bacterium possesses surface appendages called fimbriae or pili, which help it adhere to host cells and form biofilms. Growth conditions. Yersinia pestis is a facultative anaerobe, which means it can survive and grow in both aerobic, with oxygen, and anaerobic, without oxygen, environments. How human get plague infection? Humans can get infected with the plague in several ways. Flea bites. The most common mode of transmission is through the bite of infected fleas. Fleas, particularly species like Xenocilla chepis, rat flea, can become infected with the plague bacterium, Yersinia pestis, after feeding on the blood of infected rodents. When an infected flea bites a human, it can transmit the bacteria into the person's bloodstream, leading to infection. Direct contact. Plague can also be transmitted through direct contact with infected tissues or bodily fluids from animals, particularly rodents. People can get infected when handling sick or dead animals, which can expose them to the bacteria. Inhalation. The most severe and highly contagious form of plague is pneumonic plague, which infects the lungs. In the case of pneumonic plague, the infection can spread rapidly from person to person through coughing and sneezing. Laboratory accidents. While rare, there have been cases of laboratory-acquired infections, where researchers handling Yersinia pestis in the laboratory accidentally became infected. It's important to note that plague is not usually directly transmitted from person to person through casual contact. Pneumonic plague, though highly contagious, requires close and prolonged contact with an infected individual to spread. Pathogenicity of plague. Flea-borne transmission. Plague depends on fleas, particularly the rat flea, Xenocilla chepis, as its primary vector for transmission. The bacterium multiplies within the flea's gut and is regurgitated into the host's bloodstream when an infected flea bites a human or another animal. Virulence factors. Yersinia pestis possesses various virulence factors that enhance its ability to evade the host's immune response and cause damage to host tissues. These factors include a thick protective capsule, a type 3 secretion system, T3SS, for injecting virulence factors into host cells, and Yersinia outer proteins, YOPs, that suppress the host's immune response. 
Rapid Replication Once inside the host's body, your cinea pestis can multiply rapidly, leading to high bacterial loads and severe disease progression. Bubonic Plague In bubonic plague, the bacterium localizes in the nearest lymph node to the flea bite, causing it to swell and become painful. These swollen lymph nodes, known as buboes, are characteristic of bubonic plague. Septismic Plague Septismic plague is a severe and life-threatening form of the disease. It occurs when the bacteria enter the bloodstream directly or as a progression from untreated bubonic plague. Pneumonic plague. In some cases, your cinea pestis can infect the lungs, leading to pneumonic plague. This form of the disease is highly contagious and can spread from person to person through respiratory droplets when an infected individual coughs or sneezes. What are the symptoms of plague? The symptoms of plague can vary depending on the type of infection, which includes bubonic, septismic, and pneumonic plague. The symptoms can appear within two to six days after exposure to the bacterium Yersinia pestis. Here are the typical symptoms for each type. Symptoms of bubonic plague. It includes sudden onset of high fever and chills in association with headache, muscle aches, weakness, fatigue, swollen and painful lymph nodes, buboes, usually in the groin, armpit, or neck. Symptoms of septismic plague. It includes fever and chills with extreme weakness and fatigue, abdominal pain and vomiting, diarrhea, rapidly developing tissue necrosis, blackening of tissue, leading to skin discoloration and gangrene, septic shock with low blood pressure, rapid heartbeat and organ failure which can be life-threatening. Symptoms of pneumonic plague. It includes high fever, often with chills, cough, initially dry but may progress to produce bloody or watery sputum, difficulty breathing, chest pain, rapid progression to respiratory failure, septic shock, and death, if not treated promptly. It is important to note that pneumonic plague is the most severe and highly contagious form of plague. It can be transmitted from person to person through respiratory droplets when an infected individual coughs or sneezes. How to Diagnose Plague Here are the steps involved in diagnosing plague. Clinical Evaluation A healthcare provider will assess the patient's medical history and perform a physical examination to look for specific signs and symptoms of plague, such as fever, swollen lymph nodes, buboes, and respiratory symptoms in the case of pneumonic plague. Blood Tests Blood samples are taken to analyze and identify the presence of Yersinia pestis bacteria or the antibodies produced by the immune system in response to the infection. These tests may include PCR, serology tests, and bacterial culture. Aspiration of buboes. If bubonic plague is suspected, the healthcare provider may aspirate fluid from swollen lymph nodes, buboes, to test for the presence of Yersinia pestis bacteria. Chest X-rays. In cases of pneumonic plague, chest X-rays may be done to examine the lungs and detect any abnormalities. History and exposure. A patient's travel history, occupation, exposure to sick or dead animals, and any contact with individuals who have suspected or confirmed plague will be taken into consideration. What is treatment for plague? Early diagnosis and treatment are crucial for improving outcomes and reducing the severity of the disease. Antibiotics. The primary treatment for plague involves antibiotics that are effective against Yersinia pestis, the bacterium causing the disease. The most commonly used antibiotics include streptomycin, gentamicin, doxycycline and ciprofloxacin. Supportive care. In severe cases, patients may require supportive care to manage symptoms and complications which include fluid and electrolyte management, pain management and respiratory support for patients with pneumonic plague. It's crucial to seek medical attention immediately if plague is suspected. Early diagnosis and treatment significantly improve the chances of recovery. How to prevent plague. Plague is a rare but serious disease, and implementing preventive measures is essential to minimize its occurrence and spread. Here are some strategies for preventing plague. Control rodent populations. Rodents, particularly rats and mice, serve as reservoirs for the plague bacterium Yersinia pestis. Effective rodent control measures, such as trapping and poison baits, can help reduce rodent populations in urban and rural areas. Reduce flea infestations. Fleas, particularly species like Xenocilla chepis, rat flea, play a crucial role in transmitting the plague bacterium from rodents to humans. Using insecticides to control flea infestations in homes, workplaces, and areas where rodents are present can help prevent the spread of plague. Avoid contact with infected animals. Avoid handling or coming into contact with sick or dead animals, particularly rodents. In areas where plague is endemic, people should be cautious when camping or hiking and should avoid contact with wild rodents. Wear protective clothing. If in areas where plague is prevalent, wear long sleeves, pants, and gloves when handling animals or exploring natural environments. Use insect repellent. When visiting plague endemic regions, consider using insect repellents that are effective against fleas and other biting insects. Isolate infected individuals. Patients with pneumonic plague, the highly contagious form of the disease, should be promptly isolated to prevent further transmission. 
Healthcare providers should follow strict infection control measures when treating suspected or confirmed cases. Monitor for outbreaks. Public health authorities should closely monitor for plague outbreaks and respond promptly with appropriate containment measures. Educate the public. Raising awareness about plague and its transmission, especially in areas where the disease is endemic, can help people take necessary precautions to protect themselves. Early diagnosis and treatment. Promptly seek medical attention if plague is suspected. Early diagnosis and appropriate antibiotic treatment are crucial for successful management and preventing severe outcomes. Plague is a notifiable disease in many countries, meaning that healthcare providers are required to report suspected and confirmed cases to public health authorities. Early detection, active surveillance, and timely implementation of preventive measures are essential for preventing outbreaks and controlling the spread of plague. Conclusion. The plague remains a haunting chapter in human history. This devastating infectious disease has inflicted immense suffering, claimed millions of lives and left a profound impact on societies throughout the ages. While modern medicine and public health measures have significantly reduced its prevalence and severity, the lessons learned from past pandemics are crucial to better prepare for future outbreaks. That's all for today's video on plague. If you found this video informative, give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe for more informative content like this. Stay safe and see you in the next video.